Well, welcome all to our Daily Horizon view. The day today is the 6th of the 6th, 2019. Uh, we are looking at our exchange traded funds on the ASX, and this is our top five review. Today's spotlight is the DGR, which is the State Street Spider Dow Jones Global Real Estate Fund. Stick around for that one. I really like this one. I think it's very, very useful for the average person, so stick around for that. I'm here to crack your financial sky. We want to build confidence so you, everybody can go out and invest by themselves. No using managers and things. You just need some basic um, confidence and basic information. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and also jingle the bell so you know when the new videos are coming out. Greatly appreciated. Top five percentage rises for today. We saw MVA, VAP, DJRE, which is a spotlight. Hang around for that. If you're looking for income, that's a very, very interesting one. Uh, VBLD and ETHI, so NVA is the Van Eck Vectors Australia Property ETF uh, that tracks the returns of the Market Vectors Australia A REIT index, uh, so that tracks 11 property funds on the ASX. That one is a reasonable size fund, about 20, uh, $225 million market cap, that one, dividends pretty good. Uh, you get a dividend of 3.96% when I last checked. So we saw a rise in the share price today of MVA of 2.32%, uh, which equates to 57 cents on a reasonable volume for these smallish uh, ETFs of 8,600 shares traded. Top five percentage falls we saw triple O. C new, uh, QCB, EMKT, and IATW. So triple O is the uh, beta shares uh, crude oil index ETF, uh, currency head synthetic, uh, roughly uh, market cap of that one is about 21 million. So it's pretty small. There's a small dividend paid for that one of uh, roughly 1.8. 8%. We saw a fall today of 2.58%, which equates to 38 cents on a pretty big volume for that um, size ETF, uh, 16,000 shares traded. So people getting out of oil or that synthetic ETF anyway. Uh, top five dollar rises. We saw SPY. IVV, VAP, IHVV, and VTS. So for those who have forgotten, so SPY is the State Street Spider S&P 500 uh, ETF Trust. That tracks the S&P 500 index in uh, the States. That's a pretty small ETF, 31 million market cap or thereabouts. Pays a little dividend of 1.76%. We saw a rise today of $4.36, which equates to roughly 1.09% on a really, 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 really low volume of 122 shares traded. So nothing to see there. Got five dollar falls. We saw ETPMPT, ITW, CETF. Ooh, triple O and ACDC. So ETPMPT is the um, ETF's physical palladium ETF, and that's backed by a physical metal held in HSBC Bank in the United States. That's a pretty small ETF, about $1.7 million market cap. Uh, we saw a fall today of... 63 cents, which equates to 0.57% um, on pretty low volume of only a dismal five shares traded in this ETF. Nothing to see there. Top five number of trades. STW, 
VAS, VGS, IVV, and VAP. So STW is the State Street Spider S&P ASX 200 fund, and that one is designed to provide low um, portfolio turnover, accurate index tracking, and should give you a low cost because of all those things I just mentioned. So this is one of the bigger ETFs on the Australian uh, Stock Exchange. We see a market cap of $3.6 billion for that one. We saw 150, sorry, 195 trades made, if I can get my words out, not be dyslexic and confuse everyone. Uh, all on the upside, we're looking because we saw a 20 cents uh, rise in the price, which equated to 0.3% rise. Cracking on now, look at the top five for volume. We saw HBST, NDQ, AAA, USD, and STW. So HBST is the Beta Shares Australia Dividend Harvest Fund. Um, that's a managed fund um, that's designed to give regular income uh, dividends and franking credits from Australian shares. Um, so pretty much it's designed to give you double the income yield of the broad Australian market. Uh, you'll get a dividend yield of uh, roughly a 9% from memory. Um, I like this one because you get paid a dividend um, every month, which is pretty handy. So money in your pocket. Uh, this one has a market cap of 1.6 for 161,400,000. Yeah, if I can get out the bloody words. Uh, volume today, we saw 106,000 shares traded. On the upside, we saw a price rise of seven cents, which equated to 0.54%. Definitely one to have a look at, and I'll go back over my notes to see if I've actually looked at this one before. I don't think I have, but one to look at for a later episode. Top five for value, we saw VAS. STW, AAA, Bill, IVV. So VAS is the uh, Vanguard Australia Share Index ETF, and that tracks the S&P ASX 300. Uh, this one uh, has about $3.6 billion market cap. Nice little tidy dividend of 4.54%. Uh, when I last checked, that might be fluctuating a bit depending on the price. Morningstar give this one a pretty good rating. It gets a bronze rating. Uh, volume wise, pretty uh, sorry, value wise, it's all pretty low today. Uh, we saw uh, $4.5 million traded today. So VAS on the outside, we saw a rise of 38 cents, which equates to 0.47 of a percent. Moving right along now into the spotlight, which is DJRE, which is the State Street Spider Dow Jones Global Real Estate Fund. So the investment objective, the uh, Spider Dow Jones uh, Global Real Estate Fund seeks to provide investment returns before fees and costs and blah, blah, blah. That closely corresponds to the performance of the Dow Jones Global uh, Select Real Estate Securities Index. Why on earth would you even look at this? Uh, the Dow Jones Global uh, Select Real Estate uh, Securities Index is designed to measure the performance of the publicly traded real estate securities, including, including globally traded real estate trusts and real estate operating companies. Um, there's 200, roughly 200 um, shares in the index, 230 I think from memory. So that gives you good diversification, low cost. We'll have a look at the cost in the next slide. Um, transparency performance, you can you can hop on and uh, look at the graphs any day, uh, any time. And you know, you can trade the damn thing uh, whenever the ASX is open. It's a good way to 
get into real estate if you don't have money to buy your own real estate. And that's why I look at it anyway. Uh, so we can see a net asset value as of yesterday of $28.88. We can see it closed out today at $23.25. We have a market cap of $311 million. Pretty tidy management fee considering this is a global uh, focus ETF of 0.5%. Distribution frequency is semi-annual. Uh, January and uh, July. Uh, reasonably healthy dividend here of 3.93%. So this ETF offers a simple and cost-effective way to gain access uh, to a diversified portfolio of more than 200 uh, real estate investment trusts and real estate operating companies which are listed on the major exchanges around the world. DGRE could be used as a key component of a diversified income portfolio as the investment in this ETF gives you access to growth in income from outside of Australia mainly. Uh, this ETF has performed reasonably well since inception in late 2013, uh, giving uh, an investor over 10% return. Uh, as mentioned briefly before, you know, these type of things are options, other options, than actually physically uh, investing in uh, your own real estate, so houses or industrial or whatever commercial real estate actually in Australia. So if you have only have a small amount of funds to invest, these are another option uh, if you're interested in real estate. Uh, as always, we should be doing our research and not just buying into the first thing that we see. So have a look at rent and REIT. Uh, they're two other options to be looking at. Uh, so yeah, just sort of running back over what I sort of said before, so you can see um, return since inception is a bit over 10% there, so you've got the green columns. Um, looking at the top 10 holdings, and I don't really know any of those companies, obviously they're um, listed all over the world, but um, yeah, good diversification, mainly in the States, um, but there's a sprinkling of um, companies in other countries as well. So definitely worth having a look at this one. Um, yeah, if you're looking for income or you're looking for just a bit of a diversification away from the, the typical type of ETFs, uh, you know, this is runs a bit counter-cyclical to the other, other um, ETFs, but yeah, it's sort of a bit defensive. So have a look at it if you're that way inclined. So guys, as mentioned, please do your own research. Uh, we're not recommending anything here. We're merely educational and we don't know your personal financial circumstances or needs, so please do further research. So here to crack your financial sky with information. Uh, pretty keen to demystify the world of finances. Uh, it's not as uh, complicated as people think. Give me a thumbs up. Be great if you could uh, subscribe. Uh, jingle on the bell so you know when the videos are coming out. Hopefully these uh, little videos are of uh, use uh, to those who are watching them. Um, thank you very much. Have a great day.